Hi, this is Abdullah and today I'm going to be comparing two very similarly priced Nokia devices that are aimed at a completely different type of user. Which one of these phones is more suitable for you? Let's find out. So for a start, there are so many similarities between these two devices. They both have an IPS LCD display with an HD plus resolution, but the G20 does have a slightly larger 6.5 inch display as opposed to the 6.39 inch display on the 5.4. They also both come with 4 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of built-in storage. They both support dual SIM slots as well as an SD card slot if you want to expand the memory. Their camera configurations on the back is also pretty much identical. So both of them have a main 48 megapixel camera and a 5 megapixel ultra wide camera and two other cameras which are the macro lens 2 megapixels and 2 megapixel depth sensor for portrait images. The only difference is that the 5.4 comes with a 16 megapixel front facing camera as opposed to the 8 megapixel front facing camera found on the G20. When it comes to image quality I also found that their cameras produce similar results when it comes to details but they have almost completely different algorithms for the photos produced. So the G20 tends to have the HDR effect tuned quite strongly compared to a more subtle touch on the 5.4. And when it comes to the colors, the G20 produces, I would say, less saturated colors compared to the 5.4. And also there is a difference when it comes to the white balance and the color temperature, where the 5.4's images are a bit more warm. So you'll notice they look a bit more satisfying, while the G20's images are a bit more cool, so they have the bluish tint to them but other than that I mean you're almost getting exactly the same camera hardware and the exact same details when it comes to low light images the G20 actually has a brighter viewfinder before taking the image so it gives you this impression that it's gonna capture a better image but the end result between them is sort of a mixed bag 5.4's image is sharper and it definitely has more saturation when it comes to the colors. G20's end result is a bit more soft and the colors are also a bit more muted. As for the selfie camera, I would give a slight advantage to the G20. Selfie images are slightly sharper and they capture a bit more details compared to the 16 megapixel selfies captured on the 5.4. With video quality, I would say I prefer the 5.4's camera. Both of them are limited to 1080p video captured, but there is digital stabilization on the 5.4, which makes you produce smoother looking video. And I feel like the sharpness levels are tuned a bit too strongly on the G20's videos. Both of these phones capture excellent audio thanks to using Ozo Audio, which uses two microphones in order to minimize noise and capture nice and clear audio in the videos. This is Abdullah testing a 1080p video sample captured on the Nokia G20. This is a video sample captured on the Nokia 5.4. Another advantage of the 5.4 is that it supports cinema mode, which gives you more manual control over the videos produced. And this feature is completely missing from the G20. So if you're a content creator or you're more interested in photography and you wanted to choose one of these two, I would definitely go with the 5.4, just because it offers a wider variety of settings really, especially for video. Their hardware is also similar when it comes to the overall design. Although the G20 comes with a matte finish on the back with a nice nano texture, which I find to be more practical because it doesn't gather as much fingerprints and it remains looking pristine. While the 5.4 comes with a glossy finish with a very cool pattern. And when it comes to the design as well, the 5.4 comes with a hole punch camera that's on the left side, while the G20 comes with a V-notch in the center. And it's really a matter of taste but I would say if you want something more stylish, go for the 5.4. It feels like it's aimed at a younger crowd with its design, which is more flashy. While the G20 is more old school, it feels more rugged. And if I was to take one of these phones out without a case, it would definitely have to be the G20. 
And I would say their displays almost produce the exact same colors with a very slight advantage for the 5.4 when it comes to brightness. But both of them are quite good and quite usable outdoors. Another difference between them is that the fingerprint scanner on the G20 is integrated into the power button, which is on the right hand side, while the 5.4 has a more traditional fingerprint scanner that's right under the camera bump. And I prefer the implementation on the G20 because it's just easier to reach and I feel like it's a bit more reliable. But when it comes to speed, they're about the same. And the Nokia G20 comes with Bluetooth 5.0 compared to Bluetooth 4.2 found on the 5.4. The difference in theory is that Bluetooth 5.0 can transmit eight times the data at twice the speed at about four times the distance. So whether you find that useful or not will completely depend on your usage. Other than that, honestly, there are way too many similarities. Their haptic engine is almost exactly the same. They both offer really good call quality as well. Their bottom firing speakers sound almost exactly the same. Now, when it comes to the OS, both of them are part of the Android One program, but the G20 has a slight advantage because it ships out of the box with Android 11. And because it's gonna get two years of OS updates, this means that in theory, this should go all the way up to Android 13 while the 5.4 ships with Android 10 and should go all the way up to Android 12. And they both offer three years of security updates as well. And their feature set is pretty much identical when it comes to software. Now there are two major differences between them. And these two aspects will really determine whether you go for the G20 or the 5.4. And these two aspects are performance and battery life. So let me start with performance. In every measurable way possible, the 5.4 Snapdragon 662 just completely outperforms the MediaTek G35 found on the G20. So whether it comes to just the overall day-to-day -day usage, you'll notice an advantage for the 5.4, which is quicker and offers a smoother experience, or whether it comes to benchmarks where there is a very clear advantage, or whether it comes to gaming as well, where the 5.4 can play most games in a medium to high graphical settings while the G20 just does the absolute bare minimum and usually plays games at the lowest graphical settings possible. Which means that if you play any games you'll definitely prefer the 504. And this brings us to the second biggest difference which is in battery life. So the G20 comes with a 5050 milliamps battery capacity compared to 4000 found on the 5.4. So in numbers you'll be able to get between 10 and 12 hours of screen on time on the G20 while the 5.4 maxes out at about 8 hours consistently. So it really depends on how much you value these extra few hours of screen on time. If you spend a lot of time outdoors or away from a charger and you depend a lot on 4G, the G20's battery life will be greatly appreciated. But I think most people would be absolutely fine with the excellent battery life that the 5.4 still manages to offer. And they both charge at 10 watts. So when it comes to the G20, you can expect to fully charge it at just over three hours, while the 5.4 does slightly better because of the smaller capacity at just around two hours and 30 minutes. I'm always going on and on about trying to find that right balance. And in my opinion, I think the 5.4 strikes a better balance when it comes to performance versus battery life compared to the G20 that's leaning a bit too strongly towards battery life, which comes at the cost of offering excellent performance. And because of this balance, I would recommend the 5.4 to a younger audience that's obsessed with using their smartphone, somebody who would spend four plus hours on their phone, for example, somebody who's playing games, somebody who wants everything to react as quickly as possible and they're on a budget. While the G20, I would recommend it for older folks or people who aren't obsessed with using their smartphone and just want a phone that does the basics really well. They care about the battery life because you know, they sometimes forget about charging their phone and they do the occasional WhatsApp, phone call, light, social media usage, and absolutely don't care about playing video games. So which one of these audiences are you? Let me know in the comments down below. Anyways, that's it for me. Thank you guys very much for watching. Please don't forget to share, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.